What's up everyone, Willie Apple here, and yesterday, Apple has released macOS Tahoe 26.2 Beta 1 to developers, and hopefully soon they'll release it to public beta testers. In this video, I'll be showing you what is new inside the software. we got a couple things to talk about, let's get started. Alright, so the first one is that the Apple News app has been updated right here. You're going to notice that if you use the app, the sidebar has been simplified right here. So in the old sidebar, it was search, today's, news plus, sports, and puzzles. Now it's just search, today's, and news plus. If you go in the search tab right here, you're going to see that this is where you find your sports and puzzles category, and also politics, business, and food. You could also find it with a sections category inside the sidebar here as well. So you'll see sports, puzzles, politics, and business. It just is more cleaned up, to be honest. Favorites has moved up a bit, and library seems to be the exact same. Before, if you were to just click on the search tab, it would show your recently searches right away. But now you actually need to go inside the search bar to get to your recently searches. So just a little bit of a behavior change with the news app. Now the next thing has to do with the TV app. So Apple has officially confirmed and updated the TV app server sided to make it say Apple TV instead of TV Plus. And now Apple has went inside the operating system side and made sure everything here says Apple TV now. But before it used to say Apple TV Plus, now it says Apple TV. And you'll probably see references pretty much all over where it says Apple TV instead of TV Plus. So just a small little change right here. All right, the next thing has to do with Safari. If you were to go inside Safari, and try to hover over the reload icon, for example, you're gonna see that there's now a brand new hover effect. Before there would not be a hover effect before, it would just be like you weren't even hovering it. But now it is more prominent that you're hovering over the reload button so that if you click on it, you know what you're clicking on. It's also the same with this button right here and this button right here as well. So your page settings will do that as well, along with adding to reading lists and also with the translate button if you have the translations. You also notice that if you were to go inside of the menu bar right here, you're gonna see that settings for your website, connection details, clear history and managed profiles now have glyph icons. Before, for whatever reason, there would not be glyph icons at all, but now you have new glyph icons right here to represent what each button actually means. Same thing if you go to the file tab. A lot of these did not have glyph icons before, like new window. The only only one was open file, was actually has a new glyph icon now, it looks like. So yeah, Apple's just constantly updating these icons since I guess it looked really weird before, but now it actually looks good. It's also the same if you were to go to your new window right here. You'll see that new personal window has what my glyph icon set is right here. So Apple's just making it a lot better, making it it's also the same thing with view. A lot of these did not have glyph icons before. Now they all have glyph icons. Same thing with history as well. You'll see that all these up here did not have glyph icons. They all do now. I could just go on and on about the glyph icons, but I'm pretty sure you get the point. Pretty much the only one that doesn't have any glyph icons really is the develop tools. But even there, we got some new icons here as well. But I'm not going to keep going over the new icons. Just know that there are new icons there. The next thing is that if you were to open up the app called Podcasts, you're going to see that you get a brand new splash screen right here. So the first thing is that you got chapters, podcast mentions, and from this episode. And that basically tells you everything new inside the podcast app. So let's say I just go to the Apple event right here. Maybe it's not available with this specific podcast for sure. It's an Apple event, but you should be able to see chapter marks right here. Okay, now you can see the chapters right here. Yeah, you see your chapters, and it basically understands it pretty well. The next thing is that you have a From This Episode category, which basically shows everything that the episode mentions, basically. So this is a Safari link that would open inside of Safari, or in this case, Comment, which is my default browser. And it basically does what you would expect it to. Now the next thing is that the color for Sleep Focus has changed. So if you were to go inside the Focus settings and then choose Sleep, you're going to notice that instead of green, it's now purple, which is a little bit interesting to think about, considering that green has been used for a while. But honestly, me, I think I prefer the purple, mainly because that's what Sleep actually means here. So if you were to just have the Sleep Focus, it's now purple now. Nothing really major about that besides the color change. Maybe Apple's trying to change the branding, maybe introduce like an Apple Sleep feature. We'll have to wait and see about that. 
All right, taking a look at the Geekbench scores right here, we got a 39.19 on the single core and a 15.445 on the multi core. This is indicating that we are on par with 26.1 as of right now, but there are a couple features inside of iOS that we did not get inside of macOS, and I want to explain why we did not get those. So one of the biggest ones is uh, that alarm reminders now exist. So it would be basically use an alarm right here instead of just using a notification if you set that up. And the reason why that is not the case is because Alarm Kit is not a framework inside of macOS. It is inside of iOS, and that's what the Reminders app is basically built upon of. So that's why we do not have alarms for reminders inside of the Reminders app on macOS. The second thing is that I'm kind of surprised we still do not have the new alarms yet. So if you were to go to the sound section for any alarm, you do not have the new reflection ringtones at all that were introduced in iOS 26 or Little Bird. You don't see those here at all for some reason. You also notice right here that Little Bird or all the reflection ringtones are not inside the files at all. So it's a little bit interesting to see that we do not have anything regarding the new ringtones at all in inside of Mac OS 26. Hopefully we see those soon, sooner rather than later, but it is a little bit of an interesting thing to note. Anyways, what is next for Apple? We got a little calendar widget right here. And this beta was a little bit interesting in the fact that it came out on a Thursday. It probably has to do with the fact that we have an I at the end of the build number, which indicates that Apple needed to fix a couple of bugs before they were able to ship this. Now, I do not expect a new second beta here on the 10th at all. I expect one here on the week of the 17th. So I'm going to guess most likely November 17th is when we'll get the second beta of Mac OS 26. Usually Apple likes their Monday releases, except this was an exception. Apple had 26.1 released to everyone here on the 3rd, and then 26.2 betas for every other platform besides Mac on the 4th. And then here on the 6th, we finally got Mac OS. Now hopefully that's a little indication of what you should expect to come next. But yeah. Thanks for watching, come on, and subscribe, download my apps in the description down below, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!